Good Wednesday evening, everybody. Welcome back here to Weather on the Go. Uh, it's been quite a while since I've gone live, so I figured uh, let's go live. Let's talk about our weather pattern ahead. Let's talk about some, uh, some severe weather and what to expect over the next couple of weeks. So let's dive right in. We have severe thunderstorm warnings up here into portions of western Nebraska and extreme southeastern portions of Wyoming. Then we'll be going over our overall weather pattern uh, to we have a ring of we have a ring of fire weather pattern setting up here over the next say probably five to seven days across North America. We'll be going over this weather pattern and telling you what to expect there with temperatures, precipitation and going over the overall severe weather pattern going up uh, the next couple of days as well. So let's dive right into some of the warnings here uh, this evening. We have a couple of severe thunderstorm warnings just to the east of Cheyenne, Wyoming here. This is a pretty nasty looking supercell around the Pine Bluffs region. You can see it's kind of fanning out a little bit here. You have the nice hail core right to the north there of Pine Bluffs. So if you're traveling north out of Pine Bluffs here, you're going to be running into some big hail. And this is a big hailer, guys. This is two inch hailstones. And as you zoom in here, this is just to the north of Interstate 80 here. So this is north of Burns, north of Pine Bluffs, and heading toward the Kimball region here. Um, so if you have any family, friends in these areas, definitely want to take shelter because uh, so this is some big hail. This is two-inch hail. This is significant. So this is a considerable severe thunderstorm warning. And also, in addition to the hail, we also do have 60 mile per hour wind gusts here. Um, going over some of the counties affected, this is western Kimball County, southwestern Banner County, and east central Laramie County. This is all in southeastern Wyoming or the panhandle of Nebraska. So if you live in those areas, watch out. This is not moving very quickly. It's moving to the south and east at 25 miles per hour. And again, just some of the areas impacted here, Kimball, Pine Bluffs, the Albin region, Oliver Campground, the Oliver Reservoir, as well as the Kimball Airport and Bushnell. If you guys are in those regions, take shelter now, move the vehicle indoors if you are a safe spot to do so because we do have some significant hail moving in to your jurisdiction here very soon. And this eventually will be trending down toward the Dix, Potter, and the Sydney region, as well as it moves towards I-80. So if you know anybody here or along uh, Highway 71, just give them a call and tell them if you live in Kimball, Dix, Potter, or Sydney, even the Pine Bluffs region, that, hey, these severe storms are causing some very large hail. You may want to move the cars indoors or also you know, stay away from windows and move inside that type of thing as well thank you linda for the 20 dollar for the 20 dollar donation i really do appreciate it everybody thank linda in the live stream it's been a while since i've gone live so i wanted to uh share my information with you my video I did post earlier on today is out. If you guys want to check it out after today's live stream, uh, go ahead and do so. Lots of great information on there. Talking about the air quality concerns. We're talking about the extreme heat wave. We have record high temperatures to talk about. We have the severe weather over the next several days and also the longer range pattern into an early and middle portion of July. And we're also kind of hinting at the tropics as well. So a lot of great stuff in that video. And go check that out. Leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Stuff like that. Appreciate it. Uh, always welcome for any questions on any of my videos, live streams. So if you guys have any questions during tonight's live stream or the videos, uh, drop it down into the comment section. I will be you know, answering any questions, comments, concerns that you guys do have here this evening. Nice to see everybody back here, uh, Matt and Rain Maves. Thank you for joining Joey. Linda, thank you as well, Linda, for the $20 donation. I really do appreciate it. Uh, Melissa Smith, thank you for joining. Tanner, as well as Fat Pig. Linda, appreciate that. Linda Loper. Uh, James, Matt, Pamela, all you guys. William Spann, nice to have you back as well. So thank you guys all, all you guys, for joining tonight's live stream. It does mean a lot, and I do appreciate it. Slowly but surely growing this community and this weather channel on here on YouTube. I do appreciate that, guys. 
It'll likely get loud for several hours tonight into the morning hours. Yeah, definitely lots of rounds of storms. We'll be going over that here shortly. But right now, let's go further to the north and talk about another warning um, over the, uh, let's see here where we're at. We're into the panhandle still of Nebraska. We're just between the Chadron region, the Chadron region, and Alliance here into far western Nebraska. This is a gnarly looking storm here for an inch and a half in diameter hail and 60 mile per hour wind gusts with this storm. This is producing ping pong ball size hail. So whenever you see an inch and a half diameter hail, you're always going to be talking about ping pong ball size hail as well as 60 mile per hour wind gusts. So that is what we're seeing here. This is for the counties of northeastern Box Butt County and southern Dawes County. This is until 6.15 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time in this area. Um, so if you live in the Hemingford region, this will be in your locale here around 6.05 Mountain Daylight Time. That would be 7.05 Central Daylight Time for anybody curious there. And this could also include the Marsland region as well. So if you live in those areas, heed the warning as this generally tracks its way to the south and east uh, very slowly, probably about 20, 30 miles an hour toward the Alliance region. So if you guys are living there, definitely heed these warnings. Uh, we do have a severe thunderstorm watch in effect for portions of eastern Wyoming, southwestern portions of South Dakota. This does include the Rapid City area and into the panhandle here of Nebraska for Alliance, Scotts Bluff into the Sydney region down toward I-80 into western Nebraska. That is what that severe thunderstorm watch is out for. Favorable conditions for damaging winds up to 60 miles per hour hail that could be up to two inches in diameter as well as a couple of brief isolated tornadoes as well. This goes in effect until 9 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time. So that would be 10 p.m. Central Daylight Time as well. So we'll be watching that. So if you live in those areas, heed any warnings that do come out. Um, looks like the strongest of the storms are is with the southernmost extent of the severe thunderstorm watch zone. This is down toward the Pine Bluffs region. A very nice looking supercell down here. Uh, this is definitely producing some big hail. If not, we're starting to see maybe a little bit of an inflow notch. Try to set up here. We'll have to continue to watch that. Let's go over here to the reflectivity or the uh, velocity rather. And yeah, there's a little bit of some weak rotation trying to show up here north and northwest of Pine Bluffs. Um, this is getting in toward western portions of Nebraska. So we're toward the Bushnell region, Pine Bluffs, just along and north of I-80. We're going to be watching for that weak rotation. So if you guys are living in these areas or traveling along these zones, just watch out. These storms could start to rotate, even though the main risk tonight is damaging winds and large hail. So we'll watch that right now. No tornado signature on that. Just some weak rotation. Uh, I can go over here to the coefficient. And again, we're not seeing anything that is on the ground. So that is certainly some good news, but it is a severe thunderstorm warning nonetheless. So we do have to take it seriously because look at this, guys. Just to the north of Pine Bluffs, look at the purples and even the blue specks showing up here. Uh, does signify some torrential rain as well as some very, very large hail. So if you live in these zones, we do need to take it seriously as it pushes down toward Bushnell, Kimball, Dix, and the Potter region into Nebraska. So we will definitely continue to monitor that. We do have a little bit of a downpour just to the northeast of Cheyenne. So if you're in the Cheyenne, Wyoming region, there is a downpour, a thunderstorm just to your north and east of the city there. This is heading toward the Hillsdale and Burns region. Again, just north of Interstate 80 here in north and east out of the city of Cheyenne. So if you live in those areas, watch out. Cloud to ground lightning is always a threat possibly some pea-sized hail, some you know pocket change hail there. Um, we could even see some brief wind gusts, 40, 50 miles an hour. But generally, this storm here that I'm talking about, north and east of the city of Cheyenne, is generally under severe limits right now. But it continues to press to the south and east here um, with that storm motion as well as the storm to the east that is severe, pushing more to the south and east as well. So we'll be watching those storms through the next little bit here. Can we go over the models? Yes, I will go over the models here shortly with you guys. Um, I did want to get first and foremost to the ongoing severe weather before I did talk about the weather pattern we're seeing overall. One more severe warning we have to get to here. This is in southeastern Colorado, hugging up against the Kansas state line here. 
We're going to use the Dodge City radar here. Uh, decent looking storm back across this region as well. I'll put the radar into loop just to kind of give you an idea of where this storm is moving. This is actually moving from southwest to northeast, so a different direction than the storms further up to the north. So this is going to be crossing into the Kansas region and up towards Highway 50 very soon between Lamar and the Lakin area. Lamar, Colorado and Lakin, Kansas. This will be generally west of Garden City. So if you're traveling west out of Garden City toward Lamar and Colorado, you may be running into severe storm if uh, this does cross over Highway 50 rather soon. We're just mainly seeing this warrant for 60 mile an hour wind gusts and it's only for the next 13 minutes. So we'll continue to monitor that storm as well. Marcus, do you think the Midwest and High Plains will get the most severe weather this July? You know, that is a very tough question to answer because the things that have been happening lately in the weather pattern have been very variable, to be honest with you. We've been going back and forth in blocking patterns. We had an Omega blocking pattern. Then we went to a Rex blocking pattern. Then we went back to an Omega blocking pattern. And honestly, the weather pattern has been so variable. It just really depends on the strength of of those blocking patterns and if we see any blocking patterns in July um, and generally just what the airflow in the jet stream is like so it's kind of hard to tell right now as it's only uh, you know June 28th but I will note that typically the more traditional areas for severe weather in July are typically the upper Midwest and the Great Lakes and Ohio Valley so I will say that very hard to tell though whether or not um, the most significant storms will be there at all we got a new warning just that came out south and east of rapid city uh so warnings are coming out fast and furious so let's go to the rapid city radar here and check this one out uh just to the south of rapid city toward the hermosa region we are seeing a severe thunderstorm warning with this uh kind of little bit of a line segment here i yeah see we're seeing an inch in diameter hail so quarter size hail here and uh, generally under damaging wind strength, uh, you know, 58 mile per hour or greater is what you see for a severe thunderstorm warning criteria. This is under that. So we're just seeing this warn for quarter size hail. This is for northeastern Custer County and south central Pennington County. This is in southwestern South Dakota until 645 Mountain Daylight Time. Uh, this is about 10 miles south of Rapid City. It's moving due east from west to east at 25 miles an hour. And again, like I mentioned, it is warned for the hazard of quarter size hail. So if you live in the Caputa region, Thompson Butt, the Farmingdale, Folsom, and Railroad Butts region, definitely watch out for that as well. Uh, we are seeing that pushing further towards the east. This will eventually come in line with Interstate 90 toward the Wall region. So if, it, if you live in Wall, South Dakota, you may start to see some severe weather coming your way over the next 30 to 45 minutes. So be watching out for that. Um, especially if this turns into a line segment. Um, no, a lot of the times when these storms start to move further east and you already see a little bit more of upscale growth like this, it will start to kind of fan out a little more. So we will start to see more of a damaging wind threat as it pushes further to the east. Uh, we'll see what happens with this storm over the next, you know, 45 minutes or so. But certainly that's what we're seeing um, starting to occur south and east of Rapid City in South Dakota. William Spann, thank you. You did not have to do that. Thank you for the $10 donation. Great coverage, weather on the go. It's moving into El Nino and the grand solar minimum. That's driving the changes this summer, in my opinion. Well, thank you for your opinion. And yes, I do agree with you. El Nino is a major player into the weather pattern. Um, we are entering into our first El Nino in quite a few years. We were just coming out of a three-year La Nina. So this is kind of rare air. I shouldn't say rare air, but um, it's something we haven't seen in quite a while. So it is very interesting um, to see more rainfall in the southern United States and drier up north, um, something we're seeing right now. So. All right, well, we took care of those warnings. If there's any tornado warnings that pop up at any time during this live stream um, while I'm going over the weather pattern, I will be sure to stop the weather pattern discussion and go back to looking at any tornado warnings or anything significant that does pop up. That is my utmost priority here on this channel, always to keep you updated on the latest watches, warnings, and anything in between. All right, so let's look here first at what we're seeing. So let's get off the radar and let's look at some weather models here. 
um, and see the, let's go to the H triple R right now. Let's go back to the 18 Z because that's the last full run that we do have here. All right. Let's go into the temperatures real quick because this is going to be a major issue over the next couple of days, guys, is the heat down across the southern United States. We're going to be seeing lots and lots of heat. So uh, if you live in Kansas, if you live in Oklahoma, Texas, especially Texas, I know Texas has been all over the news. We've been seeing a lot of heat down here, guys. So be sure to stay hydrated. Uh, stay indoors. Don't stay, you know, don't go outdoors for long periods of time. And if you do just, you know, stay in the shade if you can, or kind of go back and forth between going outdoors and staying in an air conditioned room. Definitely a very good option. If you do live down, especially into Texas here, it has been sweltering across this region over the last several days, really. And we've been even seeing some record high temperatures as well. So let's go and look here at what you can expect for your temperatures. Moving forward here over the next couple of days, this is about 8 o'clock this evening in about an hour or so if you're in central time. And we're still seeing the heat, guys. The heat is building. Anywhere you see in these gray and whites, that's temperatures into the 90s and the triple digits. So we see a large chunk of that occurring across the south, you know, the south central United States. Kansas here, Missouri, Oklahoma, Arkansas, much of Texas down here into portions of Louisiana and Mississippi as well we're seeing those sweltering conditions with our temperatures and I'll kind of zoom in to show you what we can expect over the next couple hours. Oklahoma City, we, yeah, we're up into the 90s here. The Lubbock region into Texas will be up into the middle 90s through the 8 o'clock time frame. This is 97 degrees. The Odessa, Texas region near the triple digit uh, mark there. Dallas, Fort Worth, yeah, we're up to near 98 degrees here over the next couple of hours. Shreveport, we're into the low 90s at 93, 94 degrees it is hot, guys, so there's no mistake in that. And even up into the Little Rock region, over the next couple of hours, it will be sweltering there as well. Temperatures into the lower 90s. And even further north, guys, yeah, even St. Louis, we're talking about you this evening. 92 degrees there through the 8 o'clock time frame. Kansas City, we're into the mid-90s, about 96, 97. So it's very, very hot across that area. And that is that ridge of high pressure we've been talking about. If you guys have been following my videos lately, we have a ridge of high pressure building here. I'm going to zoom it out real quick so you guys can see what I'm talking about. We have a ridge of high pressure building across this region here. And I'm going to kind of get a little nerdy real quick with you guys and scientific and talk about what we're seeing here. Um, so we have a high pressure system across the southern United States just as such. And then we have that ridge up and over that high pressure system. Remember, the airflow is clockwise around a high pressure system. Okay, it's always clockwise around a high pressure system system and you have a lot of sinking air so you're probably seeing lots of sunshine and limited cloud cover if you live in kansas oklahoma texas and the surrounding areas there that is what we're seeing right now but over the top remember we still have that subtropical jet coming up and over that ridge of high pressure here and that's kind of feeding in these disturbances up and over that ridge of high pressure the heat dome whatever you want to call it and this is kind of promoting our chances for storms and severe weather over the next couple of days. We have some cooler air up here in the Pacific Northwest, and that's kind of where we have those low pressure systems originating and kind of riding up and over that ridge. And then they kind of move over towards portions of the Northeast. That's those low pressure systems. And with low pressure systems, those are counterclockwise airflow. So the air actually flows the opposite direction um, counterclockwise with low pressure systems, just to note that. So that's kind of the general setup of what we see. That really takes us through the Friday time frame. Uh, we have that high pressure ridge to the south. We have those low pressure disturbances over the top there with that subtropical jet bringing in some of that moisture. There could be some monsoonal moisture in this region, but it is pretty limited right now. Um, we could pick that up maybe into next week. We'll have to wait and see on that. It does look pretty dry, though, over the next 7 to 10 days for the most part. Um, if you average the 7 to 10 days out across the Four Corners region, it is relatively dry in those areas. And then we're starting to see more of the precipitation picking back up over top of that ridge as we have that high pressure system down here and then over the top there into the Midwest, Ohio Valley, and the Mid-Atlantic. 
Will Florence, Alabama be okay? Yeah, you guys are okay down there in Alabama. You guys are in the influence of this ridge. This is Florence there in Alabama, generally in northern Alabama. Yeah, you're in the influence of that high-pressure ridge. So you guys are a-okay. Um, as long as you guys stay indoors and, you know, if you're, you know, you guys can go outdoors. I'm not saying you can't go outdoors. I'm just saying, you know, it's hot outside. So if you go outdoors, stay outdoors for limited periods of time because it is serious heat, especially back into Texas, guys. When we're seeing, you know, heat index readings of 115, 120 degrees Fahrenheit, that's some serious stuff. So we really need to take that seriously. Drink plenty of fluids, whether it's like those power aids, the waters, the Gatorades. We need to stay hydrated across those regions for sure. All right. South Texas have no warning or advisory. Yes, you guys are under, a lot of Texas is actually under like an excessive heat warning and a heat advisory. So if you guys are in Texas, you guys most likely have some type of heat headline, whether it's a heat advisory, an excessive heat watch, an excessive heat warning. Uh, yeah, you guys definitely have some heat headlines down across Texas, including the Rio Grande Valley down there, Brownsville, Corpus Christi, those areas. Yeah, it's sweltering in those areas as well. Excuse me, I will be drinking water every few minutes because with me talking, it does take a little bit out of, you know, it does dry my mouth out a little bit. I will say that. So I do have to drink a little bit of water from time to time. Well, Indiana, get that heat. Uh, you guys will be on the northern periphery of the heat, and actually you guys are probably more in line to see storms. So let's actually take this a little bit further. Let's talk about the uh, storm chances further to the north since a lot of people are talking about the Midwest and Indiana and stuff like that. Let's go here to the Cape values um, and determine where this is uh, for our storm chances. So you see the bright colors on the screen and you're probably like, what in the heck are these colors? Well, these are representing energy levels in the atmosphere here. So the areas I'm circling have the highest energy levels as of this evening. So if you're in Des Moines, you have some moderate Cape, uh, probably around 2,000 joules per kilogram up here. Um, the Kansas City region, Lincoln, Nebraska, you guys have probably some of the highest Cape around the United States right now, as well as the Little Rock region getting down into portions of western Mississippi. Those areas are seeing some higher energy levels as of this evening. So let's kind of take this a little further and show you what to expect over the next uh, you know, 12, 24 hours across uh, you know, these areas to expect where the energy levels will be trending and where the storm chances will be trending and we'll take you over to the precipitation maps in just a moment you do see that the energy levels start to kind of wane as we go into the overnight hours that is typical of what you see with the loss of sunshine and insulation you do start to see a loss of energy across the united states but as we go into the morning tomorrow, we build that energy back up, and it does build a little bit further to the north. So if you're down here into Illinois, uh, the Illinois Valley, down really through the middle and lower Mississippi Valley tomorrow, that's where the highest instability will be. And just to put a note on this as well, the strongest part of this event will probably be up here to the north. And what I mean by event is severe weather, um, the northern periphery of all of this heat. A lot of this instability in Cape down here, the convective available potential energy across the lower Mississippi Valley will be untapped, which means there's going to be no forcing mechanism for lift down in this region. No cold front, no warm front, nothing. So we're probably going to be seeing a lot of energy hanging around, but no no lift for thunderstorms to develop. You have to have lift. Thunderstorms like to grow. They don't like to sink, okay? So we like to see uh, with thunderstorms, they like to grow. And there is a lot of energy around, but just nothing to lift those air parcels up and to create clouds and big clouds for thunderstorms down here. All right, so that is what we are seeing. Uh, Mayla says, from Mononc, Illinois. Well, I live in northern Illinois, so thank you for being my neighbor. <laughs> I'll take some severe storms for rain. We desperately need it. I know, yeah, across the Illinois Valley, there is a, a, a very desperate need for rain. There is a severe drought developing in many areas in central Illinois, including the Mononc Fieldcrest region. Yeah, those areas are... Um, needing a lot of rain, probably three to four inches to catch up to even just get to normal levels of rainfall in that region. And I do unfortunately have good news for for you. Um, when I say unfortunately, it means, well, we have severe weather coming with the rain. Uh, but yeah, we can take rain whenever we can get it up here. So let's go over to the precipitation and show you what to expect here over the next couple of days. So 
starting here with this evening, what to expect. And then, again, this is just a simulation of what the radar could look like. So this is not a guaranteed science or anything like that. This is just showing where the storms could be and just the general mode of where the storms, you know, how they will act through the day. This is through the evening. We do have a mesoscale convective system or what you call in the weather community an MCS across northern and northwestern Wisconsin. That will develop up here into the Minneapolis, St. Paul, St. Cloud region, north of La Crosse, Wisconsin. That'll start to dive south and east very slowly through the late evening hours. But back off to the west, this is our area we're watching out here toward the Rapid City region, western Nebraska, down into western Kansas. We have a couple of line segments starting to develop into the overnight hours. That low-level jet starts to crank on up. We start to see more damaging winds and hail, maybe a brief tornado or two out in those areas, and then they will push off for, uh, further towards the east here through the overnight hours, and they could be promoting the threat for some heavy rainfall as well. Then you're going to be seeing some changes after midnight tonight. If you live in the Chicago land area down here where uh, the Mononc area is into central Illinois, we are definitely going to start to see more storms blowing up in intensity and coverage after midnight. So if you live along and south of I-80 there in Illinois and Iowa, we could start to see more storms. Davenport, Iowa, the Peoria, Illinois region, Chicago, especially the southern suburbs, and then getting down here towards Springfield, Indianapolis, Indiana. Those are the areas we're watching. This could really turn into a nasty cluster of storms into eastern Illinois and into portions of western Indiana overnight. Um, this is more of an unfavorable time of day for severe weather. Um, like I said, this is about 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock tomorrow morning, and you see a big cluster of showers and storms here. And this is the first cluster of several that will be pushing through portions of the Midwest and Ohio Valley over the next several days through the weekend. And this could, you know, have some damaging winds along with it. A couple of Boeing segments, bo what we call bow echoes. Uh, we could be seeing 60, 70 mile per hour winds here. And potentially some hail. The hail will probably be the highest threat as we have some very cold air aloft and you have the warm air at the surface. The bigger the, bigger the displacement between the warm air at the surface and the colder the air is aloft, the bigger the hailstones could be. So that's where we could be seeing some one isolated inch and a half hailstones potentially. So watch out Indianapolis. Watch out into Effingham, the uh, Champaign-Urbana region, the Charleston, Illinois region, down towards the Evansville area overnight into the early morning hours if you're headed off here toward work tomorrow morning just have an umbrella handy because it will be a rainy one most likely for you according to the HRRR model by the time we get to 7 a.m central daylight time across these regions so then we're going to whoops and then we're going to be moving uh towards the midday hours this will start to crash into louisville so if you're heading to work and you're looking out the window late morning and saying well it's raining outside well you're right into the Louisville region, Evansville, Indiana, you guys will start to see some decent rains in toward your 11 o'clock in the morning time frame, noon time frame. This could come with some severe weather. The highest uh, area of concern for severe weather here, if there were to be any lingering in through the morning, would be on the western flank of this, uh, this mesoscale convective system or MCS. This will be around the Evansville region, probably just west of Louisville. We'll have more of a heavy rainfall threat on the eastern side. So from Louisville up to Cincinnati, that'll be the area to watch for the heaviest of the rains. Um, so we'll be watching you there. And then this will begin to dive further off towards the south and kind of dissipate uh, as it goes in toward the middle and eastern portions of Tennessee toward the Cumberland Plateau as we get toward the middle of tomorrow afternoon. This is about 2, 3 o'clock. So Knoxville, Nashville could have some storms rumbling in during the early mid-afternoon hours, but they will quickly be falling apart as we lose the instability on the eastern side of this very quickly. It's going to be outrunning a lot of the energy further off toward the east. So that will be putting that uh, storm complex to bed there. And then we look back up to the north. We have more energy filtering in further to the north, and this takes us into tomorrow's severe risk. Now, this is more of a uh, conditional risk for severe storms on your Thursday afternoon and evening, depending on the atmosphere's recovery further to the north. And what I mean by that is a lot of these storms in the morning tend to produce a lot of cold air, uh, cold pools aloft, or what is called um, outflow boundaries 
if an outflow boundary continues to kind of push a little bit further to the west so say you have a complex of storms we were just talking about take uh you know originating up here to into davenport chicagoland region and then diving south southeastward in towards uh kentucky and then eventually southward into tennessee the outflow boundary will probably be going uh, this way towards portions of like st louis western illinois the quincy region those areas um that could kind of cool the atmosphere a little bit during the afternoon and depending on the recovery of that we could could be seeing more severe storms and probably more of an isolated to scattered coverage of storms developing during the afternoon. And the reason why we see that um, potential and conditional risk is what we call there's going to be a cap on the atmosphere. This is the surface based sin or what we call a capping inversion. The brighter the color, uh, the more likely you're not going to see any storms tomorrow afternoon because there is such a strong cap on the atmosphere. It's just not going to happen. So you do see there's a little bit of a weakness in the cap here around the Davenport, Madison, Milwaukee region by 5 p.m. Central Daylight Time tomorrow afternoon and evening. Now, if this does occur then there could be some storms uh, starting to brew up here from portions of the Highway 20 corridor toward Rockford, Illinois, up there toward the uh, western su uh, suburbs there in Milwaukee, maybe as far north as Green Bay. This is really just one model depiction of this. Um, but it's going to be trying to overcome a cap. It's just weakening the cap. It's not fully breaking through the cap because if it did, we wouldn't have any colors in here. We still do. So we still have a weak cap in place. But if it can break through enough of the cap, then we could be seeing some surface-based thunderstorms and storms that could become severe. Damaging winds, large hail, and tornadoes will all be in play. All three modes of severe weather as we go in towards your Thursday afternoon. So watch out for that. But if the cap holds stronger than anticipated, then just expect a lot of cloud cover, maybe some sunshine, and probably nothing but uh, maybe a shower or two, maybe a limited thunderstorm chance, but other than that, nothing severe if the cap does hold stronger. Yeah, don't forget to hit the like button, everybody. I do appreciate it. We're up to 60 likes. I would appreciate if we had over 100 likes at least on this live stream. So thank you guys so much for joining. I appreciate it. Um, I am here for you guys to give you guys the best, most accurate weather forecast possible on YouTube. And I can't do that without your support. So please hit that like button. It's the thumbs up button down below the live stream. If you can, please. And subscribe if you're new. I have another video uh, presentation coming out tomorrow, probably late morning, early afternoon, be looking out for that. Um, that'll be out between about you know 10 a.m., 2 p.m., that time frame every day, so for the most part. So thank you guys so much for all the support over there on my videos. You guys can always comment and any questions, comments, concerns on there as well. I do appreciate it. And make sure um, if you guys are leaving the live stream here this evening to go check out my video from earlier on. Lots of great stuff in there as well. What about the heat? Well, we just talked about the heat. Um, it's going to be hot down to the south. The high, uh, the high temperatures tomorrow is probably going to be more in the 80s across this region. We're not going to see a lot of heat to the north. The hottest temperatures will still be across the southern plains in the lower Mississippi Valley. So from like Texas to Kansas and then eastward towards like Tennessee, those areas. That's where the highest of the temperatures will be. Not quite yet, James. Yeah, no, I don't uh, offer any memberships as of right now. I need to do so. I need to do so. I know some people have been asking about that. Yeah, probably going to be getting that going here rather shortly in the next couple of weeks. All right, so I appreciate you asking that. Thank you so much, V. Yeah, missed me for sure. The storms did. Just to the south. Yeah, I live in northern Illinois. Um... Is Owensboro, Kentucky at risk for tornadoes tomorrow? Great question. Um, so let's go over here to the Storm Prediction Center's outlook for tomorrow. Let's go to tornadoes probabilities. Um, the Owensboro region, I do believe that's down. Yeah, there's Owensboro. Yeah, you guys are at risk for tornadoes. You're actually the highest risk for tornadoes so far tomorrow. That's a 5% shading. That's in the brown shaded color. So if you guys are curious... Uh, the Urbana region, Springfield there into Illinois, and down here into Decatur, Effingham, Charleston, the Terre Haute region into Indiana, Bloomington, Indiana, Jasper down into Evansville and Owensboro, and just west of Louisville. Those are the areas we're most concerned about for tornadoes tomorrow. 
So definitely something to watch out for if you live in those zones. Um, not a guarantee every single person inside that area is going to see tornadic thunderstorms. And there's honestly a chance that none of uh, those areas see any uh, tornadic storms tomorrow because of what I just mentioned with the cap. If the cap holds strong, then we're not going to see any storms developing in this region. It's just it's a conditional tornado risk, which means it's a wait and see. It's a now casting type of day. So that's what we're seeing tomorrow. Looking at the large hail risk, that's a pretty uh, decent risk as well. And you guys do see that here. Um, it's a yellow shaded area, but you see these like dashed lines across portions of Illinois here and southeast Iowa, northeast Missouri into Indiana for like the Davenport region here, Chicago, Indianapolis, Springfield, Decatur, um, Owensboro. Yeah, we're seeing more of a... A dashed line here. This actually means hail that could be in excess of two inches up to three, three and a half inches in diameter, potentially tomorrow. With all the cape, the convective available potential energy, there is a the higher chance, I think, of severe weather tomorrow will be just the hail. So it's initially going to be a hail threat, tornado threat, turning into more of a widespread damaging wind threat if we do see the storms tomorrow. And another note is that if the storms overperform what the models are showing, which actually has occurred several times in the past couple of weeks, because these weather patterns are very challenging, very difficult to forecast, I do think the Storm Prediction Center could upgrade this potentially to an enhanced risk. As we go into tomorrow's update, I will be up updating you in the morning, uh, probably late morning for this. So be watching out for that. They do update on the day. This will turn into day one outlook for the Storm Prediction Center. At uh, They'll update at 8 o'clock in the morning, Central Daylight Time, and then again, 11.30 a.m. Central Daylight Time. That's what we're going to see to see if we have an upgrade to an enhanced risk, which would be a level 3 out of 5 for this area. Um, if that did occur, let me go to the actual outlook because this is just the hail probability. If that did occur, the bet, my best bet for an enhanced risk for tomorrow would actually be, and I'll actually try to use orange like they do. Again, I do not work for the Storm Prediction Center by any means, so uh, take this with a grain of salt. But if they did go enhanced, it would probably be somewhere in this region, if I had to guess. Something like that. OK, so if you live in these areas, that I just highlighted, just keep that in the back of your head. This is I-74 here for, through Peoria. This is I-39 here from LaSalle, Peru, all the way down there towards Bloomington Normal. And then you have, uh, I believe this is I-57 and then, uh, you know, all the other surrounding interstates there down toward Indianapolis. That would be the enhanced risk area, probably in a zone something like that or so okay so we'll have to wait and see we'll have to wait and see what happens as we go into tomorrow um, and most likely they would only go enhanced for the hail threat probably just the hail threat or the wind threat it's definitely not going to be enhanced for tornado probabilities there could still be probabilities for tornadoes at five percent but with what i'm seeing right now i do not see a reason for them to increase tornado probabilities to 10 percent or 10 percent hatched i really just don't see it so that is some good news on that front um, I hope I'm right with that. We don't need any tornadoes. Weather on the go. Is tonight's storms possible for tornadoes in southwest Indiana? No, th that's going to be more of a hail and damaging wind threat with heavy rain. The biggest threats with those storms going into tonight and tomorrow morning will be heavy rain, followed by damaging winds, followed by hail. The tornado threat will be last. Um, that will be the last resort with those storms. So hopefully that puts you at ease there with that. Yeah, Michigan's out of it. You're too far north for today or for the next couple of days. Yes, absolutely. All right. Um, avocado, right, Linda? Would, uh, would higher temperatures as heat builds north, does that weaken the cap itself? If the temperatures are higher around a cap, would that weaken? Yes, because if you do reach convective temperature, then it, that's what that means. You're going to see convection or thunderstorms. Um, that would certainly break through the cap. And what we look for for breaking through the cap tomorrow is is that, really, is just convective temperature. If that does get breached into northern Illinois, then certainly there could be a lot more coverage of storms. 
There are models that do bring a line of storms, and there's a couple scenarios that could happen here. here. Let me take the outlook out real quick just to show you what I am talking about real quick here. There's a couple scenarios that was painted on a couple models. The HRRR model earlier has been very consistent and even continues to be with more of the cap holding stronger. Um, it weakens the cap enough. <clears throat> excuse me. It weakens the cap enough here in southeastern Wisconsin and far northern Illinois, and that's where we have a couple supercells developing from like Milwaukee to Madison down toward like Rockford, Illinois. Um, so that's what we see. But further to the south, the cap is strong enough. It doesn't have any storms really developing during the day on Thursday tomorrow. So if that's the case and it verifies, then yes, we're not going to see much if any storms further to the south. Now there's another scenario in play, and this is an interesting one to say the least. This happens a lot of times when we're in this pattern. This is a classic ring of fire pattern over the top of a ridge of high pressure with the heat to the south. And I know a lot of people are familiar with this pattern. I definitely know that Iowa, especially eastern Iowa, is very familiar with this. And I'm going to say the term, and it's called derecho. If you guys don't know what a derecho is, it is basically a long-lived line of storms that goes over a large distance. Um, it could be going ongoing for six hours, 12 hours, 24 hours. There's been derechos that have gone over 24 hours before. So certainly that is something that could happen and we are seeing uh, the potential of there's an MCS that develops out here into Nebraska. If it develops a little bit stronger than anticipated and pushes to the east, it's what we call an MCV or a mesoscale convective vortex and that could be ongoing through the morning tomorrow and by the time it gets into western Iowa, if that continues to you know feed off the instability and moisture to the south down in this region, then we're going to have some problems, okay? Because that could turn into a derecho, and then eventually that could eventually, you know, push further to the south and east. So if that continues across Nebraska and Iowa, then it would turn across the northeastern periphery of that ridge and move something like that, okay? And that is something we'll watch out for because it get a lot of heat, a lot of instability building to the south. Now, it's not a guarantee. That's probably uh, the, you know, scenario two, of what could happen. Scenario one, the most likely outcome is what the H R the R model is showing, but there is certainly a po uh, possibility for a derecho to occur at any time during this pattern, not only just tomorrow, but Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And if you do see a derecho, they normally don't come in just ones or twos. They come in threes, they come in fours. And a lot of times derechos go unnoticed because a lot of people think that derechos are only the ones that produce 80, 90, 100 mile hour wind gusts. That is not true. Some derechos can produce 70, 75 mile hour winds maxed out. There's been derechos like the one in August 10th, 2020 in Iowa that produced 130, 140 mile per hour straight line winds without a tornado, certainly. So just take this with a grain of salt. Things will be evolving. Things are fluid in this weather pattern, and us weather forecasters are going through a very challenging time trying to pinpoint the timing, the location, and the severity of these storms over the next couple of days. It's a headache for us as it is for you guys, so I appreciate your patience. That's why my video did take longer today because I had to, to kind of determine what route I really wanted to take with my forecast, and I do think I'm kind of in between on that. There are going to be lines of storms, and there's also going to be instances where we see just a couple of storms and not much activity at all. So we will kind of have to keep evolving this weather forecast in the next couple of days. Things can change significantly. So if you go to bed tonight and you say, well, there's only a slight risk tomorrow weather on the go across Illinois, and then you wake up tomorrow and you say, wow, there's an enhanced or moderate risk. What happened? Well, things change very quickly, and the models kind of get up to date with more information overnight and if we see that happen to the west just don't be surprised if the storm prediction center upgrades and says hey there could be a derecho ongoing across this region we definitely have to watch out for that possibility it's not likely it's unlikely right now but it is still a possibility and i want to make that aware to everybody all right so thank you guys for um for that as well for giving me the chance to talk about that Yes, tornado warning in Nebraska. Thank you so much. Yes, we need to talk about this. So let's go back to the radar here. There is a tornado warning in Nebraska. So let's look. This is that same storm just to the east of Cheyenne. And this is the storm that had that weak rotation earlier on here. 
Um, so let's look here at this. This is an observed tornado. All right, guys, this is the real deal. This is an observed dangerous tornado on the ground, and this is also producing baseball size hail. This is until 645. Emergency management is confirming a tornado here in southeastern portions of uh, this is into okay, this is into southwestern Nebraska, Pine Bluffs region, okay. Um, so if you live to the east of Pine Bluffs and toward the Kimball region, this is pushing south and east. Okay, so we need to be watching out for this. Let's look at the relative velocity. Um, let's look at the high resolution velocity. So there is a couplet here. The tornado is just south of I-80 on the ground, directly south of Bushnell right now. So if you are heading out of the town of Bushnell, do not go to the south. There is a tornado on the ground, and just you should be taking your safe spot right now if you live in the Bushnell, Kimball region, or around even the Pine Bluffs area, um, even if you live outside of town. So this is just crossed over I-80 and is now just south of the interstate here in the far southwestern Nebraska. There is a tornado ongoing on the ground. And this is pushing to the south and east. So we need to uh, take this seriously. This, an this is an observed emergency management confirmed tornado. So th there is personnel on the ground here that says, hey, this is ongoing right now. And this is also capable of producing baseball size hail. That is destructive hailstones in this region. So we need to take this seriously. This is about to push into uh, portions of Colorado here in the next probably 20, 30 minutes. So if you live in Colorado up here, um, and thankfully right now it looks like it's mostly open area. So hopefully it stays over an open area. Let's look at the correlation coefficient to see if there are any uh, thing happening with this over the past few scans here. And um, it's it's there. There's a little bit of some green here showing up just to the south of the interstate, right in there, just south and east of Bushnell. Okay, so just south and east of Bushnell. It's very hard to tell whether or not it's anything, and that could just be tree debris. It could be leaves, dirt, anything. But there's a little bit of a speck there showing up just to the south, southeast of Bushnell, and that could be some of the debris. Like I said, tree debris, could be dirt, stuff like that definitely something to keep an eye on there but thankfully it looks like it's mainly over open area but you know this is country farmland so there still could be some homes out here and some uh, barns and stuff like that we need to take this seriously so again an observed tornado warning this is just to the south and east of Bushnell, so a uh, emergency management confirmed tornado. This is a damaging tornado on the ground, also capable of producing some baseball-sized hail. That's some serious hail, guys. This is into southwestern Kimball County in the panhandle of Nebraska. So we're going to continue to watch that storm as it pushes off to the south and east. And the movement on the storm as well is to the southeast at 25 miles per hour. So if there's any silver lining, this is moving slower, but you still need to take your safe spot now. And like I said, there's a little bit of a knot showing up here. I showed that earlier. I was right on that storm. I said, hey, guys, there's a little bit of an inflow notch heading into the, toward that storm there. It's got that classic kidney bean shape to it as well. That's a classic looking supercell. You got the hail core over the Kimball region um, up toward Bushnell. It's probably hailing. So watch out for that as well. If you live in those areas, definitely seeing a lot of big hail. Um, so you should be taking your safe spot in Kimball, the Dix Potter region, um, and especially if you're in this tornado warning polygon here in the far southwestern uh, Nebraska here this evening. Damaging tornado on the ground. Yeah, you're welcome, Leanne. Thank you. I didn't know you were on here. Thank you for joining. I appreciate it. As well as you, Tim Key. Thank you. I explained it perfectly. Well, awesome. I appreciate it. I appreciate your input. It would be cool to see a derecho simulation in 3D so I could watch how it forms and grows. There's actually, there is something like that. If you go onto the National Weather Service website, um, I th there's many different ones that they have done that for. I don't know if they did it on the most recent one, the August, you know, the stronger one, which was August 10th of 2020 in Iowa. But I know there, I believe there's a 3D rendition of that of the North American derecho in June of 2012. 
You just have to look that up on Google. Just look up the North American derecho June of 2012, and there might be, just look at the National Weather Service. You might have to research it a little bit. Uh, there could definitely be a 3D simulation of something like that. It, it shows how it develops, how, you know, the environment it developed in and all that. It's pretty interesting. Yeah, absolutely. I'm glad you brought that up, Joey. Yes, air quality... Uh, not so much the air quality, but the smoke. The smoke affects severe weather, and that's why it's that's why these severe weather events are so tricky as well, and adds another fuel to the fire because uh, you know a little bit more smoke than some of the models are showing definitely affects instability directly because you don't have the direct insulation from the sun. So if you have a lot of sunshine and you don't have much smoke, then certainly the severe weather is on track potentially for that day. But if you have a lot of smoke, kind of like what we're seeing in the Midwest today, then yeah, we're seeing uh, that could definitely hinder some of the severe weather. But uh, we'll keep that in mind for my video tomorrow. But thank you for bringing that up. That is a very important. Yes, smoke can definitely affect severe weather negatively because it could make severe... If you don't like severe weather, for example, you want smoke. So you want smoke, you want cloud cover. Will you see the 90 degree day in Norfolk, Virginia? Got to happen soon. First, I'm not sure. Uh, probably within the next couple of weeks, the heat will be building in the southeast. I know that. Um, other than that, I'm not too familiar with that area right now. So uh, mainly we're just talking about the severe weather tonight on here and kind of going over the weather pattern. But uh, temperature wise, I would say into July, you have better prospects of getting into the 90s there. So we're still watching this. You got that inflow notch right there just to the south of Bushnell, and you have the outflow as well. This is where the tornado would be sitting, is somewhere in this region, and that would be pushing further to the south and east here with that polygon, parallel to the polygon. So we'll be watching that as well. We are watching a rather nasty storm to the northwest of Pine Bluffs now. So this nasty supercell just off to the east is pushing to the southeast there into northeastern Colorado with time. We have another supercell trying to develop behind that here at north and west of Pine Bluffs, already producing severe weather. This is for northwestern Kimball County, southwestern Banner County, and east central Laramie County into Wyoming and Nebraska until 7 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time. This is moving due east at 30 miles an hour, and this is a pretty significant severe storm here, 60 mile per hour wind gusts and half dollar size hail. We need to watch out for this storm, especially if you you live in the Albin region, so watch out for that. This should go just north of Pine Bluffs, but let's see the direct path of this storm here. Let's put it in motion. Um, this storm may go, again, yeah, just north of Pine Bluffs, but I would not be surprised with time if this storm starts to turn more southeast, just like that supercell is um, ahead of it with that tornado warning. So we'll have to wait and see. A lot of times these uh, severe storms, if the, especially if they get cold pool dominated, um, we start to see more outflow boundaries such as this one here. You can see it on radar. Look at that outflow boundary just to the south of Cheyenne. You might have some gusty winds uh, south of Pine Bluffs and Cheyenne with those outflow boundaries there from those storms. Bringing in all of that cool air. Yeah, we're almost to 100 likes, guys. Yeah, press that like button. I appreciate it. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. We're doing some live severe weather coverage while we have it here this evening. Yeah, you guys see that uh, outflow boundary there. I'm going to kind of zoom in so you guys can see that. Look at that. It's just fanning out just to the south of Pine Bluffs and Cheyenne. I know we're close to the radar site, but that is certainly an outflow boundary. It's coming out of that supercell uh, with the tornado warning. Look at that. And, of course, outflow boundaries are never in straight lines. They're kind of wavy sometimes. They curve a little bit. Very interesting to look at there. That is absolutely for sure. All right. Anybody have any questions, though, regarding anything I talked about here this evening? Uh, absolutely put that in the comment section below. I appreciate it. I absolutely appreciate it. But yeah, we're going to continue to monitor this tornado warning as long as it is here. We have an observed tornado warning for the next 15 minutes. This is a dangerous supercell as it pushes off to the south and east here. Let's look again at the velocity couplet here. You still have a little bit of rotation there still showing up. 
Yeah, the tornado would be right there, guys. Right there where the greens and reds come together here. Right just to the south of Interstate 80. This will be pressing in towards the Nebraska-Colorado state line very shortly there toward County Road or Highway 71. So if you know any, anybody that's traveling near there or live near there, give them a call. Say, hey, there's a tornado on the ground moving toward your region. It's moving southeast at 25 to 30 miles an hour. So definitely need to heed the warnings. Am I planning on going live more often? Probably here, you know, every couple of, you know, a couple times a week or so. And certainly if we have bigger, severe weather events, I will be going live. Um, certainly if we have like a derecho or something occur. Yeah, thank you so much, Linda. Yeah, hope everybody stays cool and keep up on the weather. Yeah, definitely. Hydrate, 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 especially the heat across the south. I know Tennessee's been hot. Texas has been stifling hot. Uh, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana, those areas. It's been very hot lately. Stay hydrated. Will it be a major th uh, severe thunderstorm in J uh, July in the state of Michigan? I cannot predict severe weather you know farther out than you know five seven days let alone next month so all i can say is that usually traditionally severe weather in july is across the upper midwest the great lakes and the ohio valley so stay on your toes for that i cannot predict whether or not you'll see a significant severe storm in your area like in your backyard or not i cannot predict that i wish i could It'd be great wouldn't it but i can't so just be on your toes for that July will be active. You know, May has been active. June has been active for sure. You guys know that across the Great Plains. And there's no reason to believe that July won't be active. It's just when and where will be the uh, question of that. It looks like July starts active toward the 4th of July. Could have some severe weather. But how July ends in the middle of July is still unknown right now. We do not forecast severe weather that far out. You can give the big picture of what severe weather could look like. Um, but it's, even that is just a grain of salt at this point. So yeah, we're looking at the correlation coefficient. This just shows if there's any debris in the air and I do not, I'm not seeing that we did have a brief, a brief little blip here. And if I kind of zoom in, you guys can see that, see how it kind of went from like a dull kind of just a bunch of colors to like a bright green color there for a second. And then it kind of fizzled out. There might have been a brief tornado touchdown right just to the south and east of Bushnell. And I'm not really convinced. I wonder if that's still on the ground. Let me see here. I mean, it still could be on the ground. It's very possible. And if it is, it's not as strong as it once was. It was definitely much stronger just as it crossed right over I-80 there. Just, just south of the interstate. Just to the south southeast of Bushnell in Nebraska. That's where the strongest signature of that was. Um, but a lot of times these supercells recycle and there's nothing in its path. A lot of times you see a lot of storms kind of, uh, you know, interrupting the flow with this. There's nothing out ahead of it here into northeastern Colorado. So it has plenty of heat to work with. It's got an inflow notch here a little bit. Starting to broaden out, you can tell it becoming a little bit more of like a uh, um, an eagle, what I call like an eagle's wing. You can see how it's kind of flattening out, kind of curving out here, where just a couple of minutes ago, I can go back to what the radar just looked like. See, a couple of minutes ago, it was much tighter here, kind of like a baseball mitt if you're kind of trying to catch a baseball on your glove. And then it kind of opened up and kind of looked like a wing of an eagle. That's kind of what it looks like right now. So that's what we're seeing right now. We're going to have to keep an eye on the storm. Definitely tornadic still has the potential to produce a tornado. It could still be producing one. So we need to watch it. Rockford tomorrow. Are you talking about Rockford, Illinois? What Rockford are you talking about? I'm guessing you're talking about Rockford, Illinois, um, around where I live. Yes, Rockford, Illinois is under a threat for severe weather, level two out of five, a slight risk. Um, you're in a conditional risk for severe weather. I think the time frames to watch out for severe weather would be from midnight 
tonight, or I guess that would be tomorrow morning. So from midnight to 6 a.m. And then again from 3 p.m. Thursday afternoon through about 9 p.m. Thursday evening. That would be your highest threat of severe weather in Rockford. And the biggest threat would be hail of 2 to 3 inches in diameter. So you're talking hen egg size hail, tennis ball, potentially even baseball size hail in the Rockford, Illinois region. If the storms come to fruition tomorrow, that would be your biggest risk. And then that would be followed by wind, uh, wind gusts, wind damage up to 70 miles per hour, and then a brief isolated tornado. Although the tornado threat looks to be much further south into central and southeastern Illinois, as it looks right now. Thank you, Kristen B., for the $10 donation. Thank you for covering the weather. My storm anxiety is high, and this helps me to better prepare. Well, thank you. I appreciate the donation, and absolutely, I am always here for you guys to keep you ahead of all the storms. Indeed, yes. That's why I'm here live this evening covering these dangerous storms here. I knew that there was some severe weather ongoing. I said, hey, I need to go live. People need to know about these storms. That's why I'm live here. So thank you so much for the donation, Kristen B., and, um, or Christine, Christine, I don't, I said Kristen, I mean Christine, Christine B. Thank you so much. I did not mean to mispronounce your name by any means. I remember on the April the 5th, Michigan, we were supposed to have a PDS thunderstorm, particularly dangerous situation thunderstorm. Never happened. What? Those, it's it's hard to say. Um, it, it is probably the same pattern as what we're in right now. It's just kind of a hit and miss type of pattern. You get a storm or you don't get a storm. That's all it is, really. Can I eat dinner and keep the live stream going? Well, I already ate dinner, so yes, I can keep the live stream going. Yes. <laughs> yeah, Rockford, Illinois, yes, Absolutely. Damaging hail tomorrow, potentially up to baseball size, 70 mile hour wind gusts, and followed by a brief tornado threat. Um, to be quite honest with you, it does not look like the worst case scenario ever in Rockford. Um, but if the cap breaks, I don't know if you're here when I was talking about the capping inversion. If that cap breaks tomorrow, Rockford, Illinois could see a dangerous severe thunderstorm. If the cap does not break, the sunshine will be out, the clouds will be out but there probably won't be so much of a drop of rain. So it's, it's, it's one of those situations you flip a coin, you either get severe weather or you don't get anything at all. And for your guys' sake, I know that Rockford, Illinois, um, you, you want damaging storm or you want storms, but you don't want damaging storms. You want the rain. You don't want the damaging storms. They do not. The Storm Prediction Center has a meso-analysis that looks at that, but that's not till the day of. So we're still watching this tornado warning. Yeah, there we go. The tornado is no longer on the ground here into southwestern Nebraska, so that's good there, as radar indicated. Um, so that's good. The tornado has weakened and is not on the ground anymore. Although, I am seeing some interesting developments in the last couple of scans here, guys. You see how it looks like a seahorse now, and I'm not saying this as a joke. You have the, uh, you know, you have the hail core up here to the north, baseball size hail or so, maybe tennis ball size hail, and then you have the seahorse part of it with it kind of curling up like this. That is a concern because this could be recycling, and we could have another tornado drop out of this as it pushes south and east into Colorado very soon. So we'll have to watch that. I'm definitely seeing a lot of inflow still into this trying to tighten up again. So we'll have to watch out for that. What are the chances of Southern Illinois getting a storm tonight? Pretty decent. I think there could be a chance of some damaging winds and hail. Uh, that would be the main risk. Your main risk for severe weather would be tomorrow on Thursday. But certainly if the complex of storms come to fruition, like I showed earlier on the HRRR model, then we could be talking about some heavy rain, damaging winds, and hail. Probably more 60 mile per hour winds and quarter size hail. Just kind of a general baseline type of severe weather threat there into southern Illinois. So we will be watching out for that. All right. 
yeah, guys, go watch my go watch my El Nino video. Uh, that was also um, two days ago. That was on June twenty sixth. Lots of great information on what to expect through the rest of summer, weather wise, with the weather pattern in general. I can't you know get super specific and tell you exactly if it's going to be you know eighty three degrees in Nashville, Tennessee, on you know July third. But I can say. You know, the overall weather pattern, what I'm seeing with the long range models, that's what the climate models are for. So go check that out. That was two days ago. Will Lake Michigan make the storm stronger? No, it has nothing to do with that. Um, Lake Michigan can add a moisture source um, for instability, but no. You're new to this kind of weather and it truly scares you. We don't get this kind of stuff in Southern California. Oh, you just moved. Did you move from California to the Midwest? Yeah, there is um, a chance for severe weather and it's not the greatest chance. It's certainly not, you know, the best chance that's ever happened there in Southern Illinois. But um, if you're not used to that, it could be different. You know, damaging winds to 60 miles an hour and hail. It could be different for you. Um I think the best chance of that is probably Indianapolis to Terre Haute down to maybe Paducah, Kentucky. Maybe. That's what it's looking like. Evansville, Indiana, Louisville in the morning and toward midday if possible before that starts to weaken. Yeah, this is looking like a gnarly storm here now to the north. Yeah, it looks like Pine Bluffs. You might actually get a storm out of this here. 60 mile hour winds and half dollar size hail. It's moving east, almost starting to back build a little bit. Just to the west of Pine Bluffs here. We're starting to see that back build just a little bit. Might have a little bit of a downpour moving in toward the city there in Pine Bluffs very soon. So be watching out for that. Forecast for tomorrow says partial cloudiness and smoke residing. Do you think that will help the cap stay strong? Um the smoke residing the smoke kind of lessening would actually make the cap break potentially because if it gets hot enough the convective temperature will be reached or breached so that's what will happen for tomorrow potentially again the 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 threat for severe weather over the next couple of days is conditional it's not a guarantee it's not a slam dunk for anybody certainly so uh yada 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 Let's see. I'm looking at a couple things here. Sorry, guys. I'm just looking at storm reports that are just coming in here real quick. See what's happening. So sorry if I'm not talking here for just a moment. Uh, we're talking about a tornado warning, Tanner, um, weather and gaming. Yeah, we're talking about a tornado warning. There was a tornado on the ground. It tried to tighten up a minute ago and starting to fizzle out again. Just going over storm reports, guys. So just give me one moment here. Catch up on my information so I can pass it along to you. You're basically the only one I get my weather from because you've been right on the dot whenever I've watched you. Keep up the great job. Well, thank you. Appreciate it, Kimberly. Yeah, I'm I try to be I'm, I'm trying to become one of the most accurate weather forecasters on YouTube. So that is my goal. I want to provide everybody with a real, true, honest forecast that you can rely on every single day. That's my goal here. Absolutely, Linda. I agree. Thank you. Um, let's see. Yeah, if you have not pressed the like button, be sure to press it down below. Appreciate it. Helps out getting more people in here. Yeah, this is a nice, nice look. At, look at that. The new scan just came in, guys. Pine Bluffs, you're going to be very close to that hail core. I would be surprised if the NWS office, there, there goes the tornado warning. That's gone now. Um, if I would be surprised if the NWS here, in Nebraska or northern Colorado doesn't extend this further to the south with a warning of something like that soon because we're starting to see some back building back here so I would not be surprised to see some type of warning further south to include Pine Bluff soon 
It's almost like a training thunderstorm. It moves over the same areas there. You got a supercell over the Kimball region. We had some baseball-sized hail potential earlier, and hey, now we're seeing another big hail producer back to the west here. I mean, it says half dollar size hail. I would not be at all surprised. Where are you seeing these blue specks here just to the northwest of Pine Bluffs and north of Tracy? I would not be at all shocked if we saw golf ball size hail out of this storm. I would not be shocked. Ping pong to golf ball size hail is definitely probably possible if this continues to strengthen. And this would be heading toward the Bushnell region. So if you live in Pine Bluffs, but even Bushnell especially... You just had a storm a little while ago there. You may see another one, and this could be another big hailer for you. So get ready for a potential another hailstorm for your area here rather soon. Here, I'll put the uh, radar in motion so you can see where this storm is going. Yeah, you can see it kind of back building further south and east there. Yeah, so Pine Bluffs, you're definitely going to get a downpour if you're not already. It's definitely going to start opening up with torrential rain there here in just a few minutes. All right. Well, we got a new tornado warning that just occurred, uh, just came out. This is including northeastern Colorado now. This is a new observed tornado. There it goes. It's recycling again. A lot of these supercells tend to do that. This is uh, for northeastern Weld County and northwestern Logan County in northeast Colorado until 7.15 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time. At 6.43, a confirmed tornado was located 10 miles south of Kimball Airport or 13 miles south of Kimball. It's moving southeast at 25 miles per hour. This is a damaging tornado in progress. Weather spotters have confirmed the tornado is on the ground right now so if you live in the rural areas the open areas of northeastern weld county and northwestern logan county in northern colorado please heed the warnings this is a tornado in progress uh no derechos are are not even close to santa ana winds derechos come with thunderstorms and they are probably 10 times potentially more dangerous than Santa Ana winds because they move in a straight line and they are can, they are with thunderstorms. So not only can you see damaging straight line winds from them, you could also see hail, blinding heavy rain, and also a couple tornadoes as well. Derechos also are more dangerous because they move very quickly. Usually a lot of times... Derechos move at, you know, 60, 70, 80 mile per hour plus. They move very fast most times. Um, those are the progressive type of derechos. There's two different types that we m know most of. You have serial derecho or a progressive derecho. Usually the progressive ones are warm season derechos. Those are what you typically see in the spring and summer. Serial derechos are usually a cold season uh, derechos in the fall and winter time. Those ones are more with low pressure systems that are stronger, um, such as the one we saw in December a couple of years ago. The progressive derecho, um, Kimberly, just look up the August 10th, 2020 Iowa derecho, and that could show you just what the power of those things can do. They flatten the corn completely. They have flattened, um, they've knocked over silos. I mean, this. there's some videos on YouTube of that storm, and it's it's powerful, guys. Derechos put a lot of stress on trees, corn crops, a lot of things. So, and they're not only are they different from Santa Ana winds in that regard, but they're more widespread over a larger area than what probably the Santa Ana winds are. So, so just to give you a perspective on that. But great question, though, nonetheless. That was a great question. Thank you for asking. Any chance Northern Illinois will be upgraded to enhanced? It's very possible. Uh, it will not happen, however, until tomorrow afternoon, if that did happen, probably. And if it was, I do think it'll be more central Illinois, south of I-80, rather than northern Illinois. But things can still change overnight, so we'll be updating you tomorrow morning. So watch out for that. 
There's another reason why you guys should follow me on Twitter. It's on the screen. Follow me on Twitter at HWeather420 for up-to-date weather information. I do post on that platform fairly frequently, so be sure to follow me on Twitter as well. So I put my videos on there whenever I uh, upload my videos to YouTube and all that stuff. So be sure to follow me on that. Yeah, I'm just seeing some, yeah, they're ha 51 minutes ago. Baseball size hail reported south of Burns, Wyoming. So there have been confirmed by weather spotters, baseball size hail south of Burns, Wyoming earlier on. Wow. Hello, Haley. How you doing? Um, yeah, you're welcome, Kimberly, for explaining that. No problem. Yeah, the yeah, TF, the, the winds with that was pretty crazy. That's right. And, you know, we're in that pattern again. Not to, in, The power of that derecho is rare. I mean, to get something to produce straight-line winds without a tornado over a widespread area in eastern Iowa of 120 to 140 miles an hour is hard to do. You have to have a lot of ingredients come together to do that. So, and for that duration, too, I mean, it was, it was moving quick, but it was you know, producing a lot of wind in the same area for, I want to say like 20 minutes. I mean, it was a long time for, for some, you know, strong winds like that. So. Yeah. East central Illinois is a slight risk right now. Yep. That, that could also be an area upgraded to an enhanced risk, but that will not happen until tomorrow's update. They will not put an update out for that tonight. Is a progressive derecho worse than a Category 5? No. A Category 5 hurricane is always worse. It's A Category 5 hurricane is a Category 5 hurricane. But a derecho, the one in eastern Iowa a couple years ago, could probably mirror what a Category 2 hurricane would be. It's basically like a land hurricane. How's Elgin, Illinois, going to be tomorrow? Could be some damaging hail up to two inches or more in diameter, you know, two to three inches in diameter there. You could have hail up to baseball size, 70 mile hour wind gusts, and a brief tornado spin up on Thursday, potentially. Again, the highest tornado threat tomorrow currently is in southeastern Illinois, well south of Elgin, but we'll continue to watch it. Things can always change. An upgrade to an enhanced risk is possible, so we'll watch that tomorrow. Absolutely. All right, I'm still watching some of these rolling uh, these rolling storm reports. They're coming in here fast and furious this evening with these storms there in Nebraska, Wyoming, and Colorado. Yeah, wow, I'm seeing a lot of golf ball size hail here. I'm seeing uh, ping pong ball, quarter size, baseball size hail reported. A lot of big hail there especially into Wyoming earlier on today. You cannot drive. Yeah, I would recommend to not drive. Yeah, you don't want to be driving in a derate show. And honestly, you probably want to just be in a basement for those because even uh, treat a derate show like a tornado uh, most times. That's how I would do it. Treat it like a tornado because... You have trees outside. They could always fall on your home, too, because, you know, straight line winds cause, like I said, a lot of stress on the trees. Yeah, the smoke is crazy today. Yeah, absolutely. Hopefully tomorrow it thins out a lot more. I've noticed looking out my window right now, it's a little bit thinner, ever so, sl uh, ever so slightly thinner with the smoke than earlier. But it's still there. You can see it. You can even smell it where I'm at, too. And that's the problem. So if you're like exercising outdoors, going for a walk, going for a jog or a run or anything, yeah, you're you're smelling the smoke and it's not very good for your lungs going, you know, doing exercise outside for a long period of time. I was caught driving in the August Iowa derecho when it hit. Highway 10 miles west of Iowa City. It came up over a hill. 
Yeah, those they are move they move very quickly, absolutely. Yeah, so we're still watching this tornado warning here. These are mainly turning into big hail producers, to be honest with you. There still is a tornado warning. This is observed tornado. So let's go here real quick to look at this here for just a moment. Let's see the latest scans. Yeah, look at that. There's a brief touchdown there just west of, I think that's County Road 71. Look at that. Even saw the yellows come out with this one. Just briefly. Just briefly. So let's see. All right. Uh, again, it, it's one of these situations where you see an observed tornado warning, and it, it, it was observed, but then it weakens very quickly. You're seeing a lot of these brief tornado spin-ups. This could be the second or third tornado that this same storm has produced in the past probably hour in this region here. Basically all the way back to this region. So in this area from about Bushnell all the way down here to northern Colorado has had a chance at some type of tornado potential over the past, you know, 45 minutes to an hour. Yeah, that tornado would be right, right there. That'd be pushing more to the southeast. So it's eventually going to get into northern Colorado here rather soon. Let's look at the correlation coefficient here. Uh, let's go back to where it did touch down. Uh, again, this is open area, so that's good news because it probably wasn't picking up very much of anything, to be honest with you. So that's some good news. This is just the correlation coefficient showing you if it picked up any debris of any sort and lofted it into the air. Right now, I'm not seeing any significant signs of that when it did touch the ground, and that could just be because it's in such an open area and there's not really anything but dirt or tree debris really that much, if even that there. So I know this is an open area in the Great Plains, so who knows how many trees are really out here anyway. But we're seeing a signature again, another promising signature. You have an inflow notch here, and then you have the tornado would be sitting right in that region. So we need to continue to watch that. But the storm behind it has completely gone cold pool dominated. What I mean by that is this is turning into a wind bag as it um, pushes off to the southeast. So this is going to be mainly a gust front with winds pushing through Pine Bluffs. Bushnell and then Kimball. Again, you're going to see more severe weather. We could be seeing some widespread damaging winds up to around 60, 65 miles an hour with some half dollar size hail pushing into your region. Ping pong ball size hail even as that pushes into your region here shortly. So a couple rounds of severe weather in some of the same areas over and over again. Yeah, we never want to really scare anybody when we're talking about derechos, but when it, you know, it looks like a classic pattern like that, it's always worth noting, you know, so we don't want to scare anybody by any means. Let's see here. Um, I think... Oh, what happened to the storm reports? I just was on the page for the storm reports, and I don't know where it went. i got to refresh the page here. Yeah, there's a lot of hail reports coming in. There is some wind damage with these storms as well, especially back there toward Pine Bluffs and Burns. Yeah, just south of Burns, you can see it on the screen, just, just to the south of my... Uh, weather in the go, all your weather coverage logo there. You can see Burns, that's back there, west of Pine Bluffs. Just to the south of Burns, right along I-80 there, there was a report of baseball-sized hail earlier on with the supercells. So that was very interesting in itself to see. And we've seen a lot of hail with these storms the past couple of weeks. I mean, Texas has gotten a lot of hail, um, Oklahoma... 
Nebraska, Kansas. There's been areas that have seen a lot of hail over and over repeatedly over the past couple of weeks with some of these big storms. And we got a nice little storm down here just to the south and west of Lakin. This is in western Kansas here. This is a nice little storm. This is for ping pong ball size hail and 60 mile an hour wind gusts. Mainly over open areas. It's moving to the east at 25 miles an hour. So it may just move just south of Lakin for the most part, at least the strongest part of the storm. And it'll probably move over, it looks like, Highway 83 between Garden City here and Sublette. So if you live in those areas, watch out. The storm is heading just straight east. So if it literally continues on its path, it will be moving into the Cameron region or the Cimarron region, however you pronounce that there in western Kansas. Again, I try to pronounce these cities as best I can. I'm from the Midwest, so it's very tough sometimes. But in general, if this holds on, it'll be moving down that way toward Dodge City, so closer to the radar site very soon. But it is not moving very quick. It's moving east at about 25, 30 miles an hour. So watch out for that if you live in western Kansas. Looks like we got a new tornado warning, so let's go back up here to the Cheyenne, Wyoming radar. A new tornado warning is out. Looks like the whole southern edge of the storm has gone tornado warned. The second tornado warning is a radar-indicated tornado warning. This is for southwestern Cheyenne County, southeastern Kimball County until 7.30 Mountain Daylight Time. A large and extreme... Uh, what is going on here? Okay, it says radar-indicated, but then... Okay. Well, this is not radar indicated. Uh, it says radar indicated. This is an observed tornado, guys. This is a, da a damaging tornado, but it is radar indicated rotation, but it's apparently it's on the ground. Kind of a mixed signal here. I don't know why the NWS is saying it's a radar indicated tornado, but then saying it's a particularly dangerous large tornado in progress. So that makes no sense to me. But anyways, uh, damaging tornado is on the ground here. Um, on the southern edge of the storm, it's moving more east now. So it's moving east at 30 miles an hour. It was moving southeast earlier on. Um, this was located 12 miles south of Kimball Airport or 14 miles south of Kimball itself. Moving due east at 30 miles an hour here. So um, this will be eventually, if you live in the Mount Vernon or Lorenzo region, into Nebraska, you want to be watching the storm very closely as this rotation in here is pushing more to the east now instead of to the south and east, okay? So we need to be watching that very closely. If you live in the Mount Vernon area and over there toward Lorenzo with time. Again, the, the inflow notch is there, and the hope is once the storm gets a little bit closer out here to the east towards Sydney, Nebraska, and it starts to interact with this storm a little bit and kind of gets choked off with that inflow notch. You can see the inflow notch here right into that storm there. Uh, still has a lot of free space to work with. There's no storms really interrupting it to the south and east. So we need to you know continue to watch it here. Yeah, if you guys are here, have not pressed that like button, the thumbs up button down with the live stream, I would appreciate. Let's try to get to 150 likes. I would appreciate that. If you're not subscribed to the channel, be sure to subscribe. We're only 11 subscribers from 31,500. So if you have not subscribed, it's free to do. You get detailed weather breakdowns on North America, including Southern Canada, the United States, the tropics, and much more on this channel, including these live streams. So... Be sure to subscribe if you have not already. Free to do. The Torcon today is a two. Is that what you're saying? Rain, uh, rain Mavs. The Torcon's a two. Hey, it can still happen, right? If there's a number, there's a chance for tornadoes. That's what that proves. Yeah, this storm, this storm is getting eaten up by the uh, 
the storm is getting eaten up behind there. The, the, the lead supercell here is taking up all of that energy and putting it into this tornado warning. All of its might. A huge hail core here south of the Kimball region. But the storm back toward Pine Bluffs was like kind of starting to produce more widespread damaging winds. And I, I suppose it's still, you know, 55, 60 mile per hour wind gusts with the storm. That's why it's still warned for that. Because severe criteria is 58 miles per hour or greater. But I, I this storm started to weaken because of that, uh, the outflow that pushed through. It's cooler, so it's more stable air behind the supercell. And it's taking up all the energy, so the storm behind it is saying, well, you took up all the energy, I guess I get nothing. That's basically why it's falling apart. Yeah, here's the good news I was hoping for. You see that? Look at that, guys. It's starting to try and close up here. You can see the inflow notch is kind of trying to get choked off, which is some good news, which means this tornado warning could expire or be canceled soon. That is the hope. But we're still seeing the two-inch hail, so we're seeing some big hail with that storm for sure. What is going on with this? Okay. Oh, more storm reports coming in. Hey, look at for hail. More storm reports for hail coming in. <laughs> quarter size, quarter size, quarter size, ping pong, quarter. Yeah, there's a lot of quarter size hail coming in, so a lot of reports. And most of these are in Nebraska. Go figure. That's where the storms are. <laughs> All right. Even a couple there from Kansas, from that storm down there by Dodge City area, Garden City. Okay. Well, we'll wait and see what the storm does here. If it appears like it's weakening... I think we're going to start eventually to wrap this live stream up. Let's see what's up here. Yeah, we st we have a severe thunderstorm war a watch up here toward the Eau Claire, Wisconsin region and into northwest Wisconsin. This is here going in effect for the next several hours. This is until 2 a.m. Central Daylight Time. This is for scattered damaging winds to 70 miles per hour. Scattered large hail up to an inch and a half in diameter. And a tornado or two is possible. Several strong to severe thunderstorms are expected for uh, to form this evening and spread across the watch area. Locally damaging wind gusts and hail are possible with the strongest cells. All right, so that's why they have a severe thunderstorm watch up there in the northwest Wisconsin until 2 o'clock in the morning is for that reason there. For damaging winds, hail, followed by an isolated tornado or two possible. And you can see a couple of storms are starting to fire, uh, fire up up here. None of them are severe right now in the northwestern Iowa. Rice Lake to Eau Claire, none of those are severe right now, but they could definitely start to become severe as we head deeper into the evening here tonight. So definitely be watching out for that. Hey, we do have a little sneaky severe thunderstorm warning just to the south and west of Grand Forks up here, though. It's a nice looking storm. We got that up here uh, toward Cooperstown. 60 mile per hour wind gusts, quarter size hail, a tornado possible tag on that as well. Binford, Red Willow Lake, Jesse, Moe's, and Cooperstown. If you live there, take shelter. This is heading generally toward the Finley region. That is in eastern North Dakota. So a little sneaky severe thunderstorm warning up there right now. Other than that, the biggest, baddest game in town for severe weather is here, right on the Nebraska-Colorado state line. 
I have to let you go. Everyone have a safe and cool evening. Thank you so much, Linda Loper. I'll have a new weather forecast update for you and everybody else tomorrow morning, late morning, early afternoon time frame between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. Thank you for joining. I appreciate it. What will Kansas City, Missouri get in July? I have no idea, honestly. Probably more rain. I can't forecast for the entire month of July without, you know, I can't say when exactly it will rain and, you know, when exactly it, there'll be a severe thunderstorm there in Kansas City. But I will say the severe threat will be there probably because it's summer and probably some heavy rain there as well. From time to time. Yeah, the active pattern this summer going into July and August is likely going to be further south like we've been seeing it. You know, central, southern plains, Tennessee Valley, mid-south, southeast, you name it. Still going to be the same game, different day. More heavy rain, more severe weather in the same areas. I know, it sounds like a record player that never wants to quit. <laughs> We've had a lot of rain in those areas. That's why we've had drought building in the Midwest and Ohio Valley because they get all the rain in the south and there's nothing left once the moisture gets up into the Midwest or the, if there's any moisture at all. So, Yeah, I feel like this storm here is going to be going to be one to watch for the next couple of hours. Of course, I can't be live for that long, but if you live in this region here, I want you to be on you know, on guard for the potential for some tornadoes and damaging winds and hail over the next couple of hours. We just had a new tornado warning issued. This is a radar indicated tornado and ping pong ball size hail. This is moving east to 25 miles an hour, northwestern Logan County in northeast Colorado until 745 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time. Yeah, there was already a tornado just south of Bushnell, Nebraska. That's the storm we're talking about right now, Saunders. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. But yeah, that's the storm we're talking about right now. That's pushing, that has that new tornado warning. Because there's Bushnell right here. And then that just crossed just south of Bushnell. And that's pushing down in toward the Peets region. So Peets, Colorado. And this will be approaching the Interstate 76 corridor into northeast Colorado soon. So... You need to be taking your shelter now if you are down there. No, Tyler, it is not. No, it's just a radar-indicated tornado warning. So just a baseline, normal tornado warning. No tornado on the ground with this right now. But we've had history of this storm producing a couple brief tornado touchdowns over the past you know, half hour. So certainly it can do it again. If it's already done it twice, three times, what's another time, right? It could definitely happen again. That's what happens a lot of times with these supercells. They kind of spin up tornadoes briefly, um, and then they kind of fizzle out, and then they get tighter and you know rotate stronger, and then they produce another tornado, then they fizzle out again, kind of a revolving process. And I can't be live all evening to track this. I mean, this thing could be producing brief tornadoes all the way to imperial uh you know the imperial region here into nebraska it could cross through northeastern colorado and then move into nebraska again toward mccook later on but yeah it's it's showing signs of the hook the hook just continues to you know what the crazy part is about this storm is that this storm has literally had two or three hook regenerations on it over the past like half an hour which is crazy and look how big the supercell is compared to what it was earlier on. I mean, this thing is a heavy rain and hail producer if I've ever seen one on the northern side. I mean, that is a meat of a storm. A lot of hail coming out of that storm there, just south of the Potter region, south of Kimball. I'm doing good, Kyle. Thanks for, uh, thanks for asking. How are you doing? Thanks for joining this evening. Yeah, till 2 a.m. Rain Mavs up into northwestern Wisconsin. Yep, 2 a.m. Central Time. Severe thunders from watch. Winds scattered up to 70 miles an hour. Scattered hail possible up to an inch and a half in diameter, and a possible tornado or two in that region through 2 a.m. How many times can a storm recirculate? As many times as it wants. 
as long as it doesn't run out of energy. And there's nothing to the south and east of it besides the storm over here toward the Chapel and Sydney region. Um, the hope was the storm would keep going east and, uh, you know, run into this storm and kind of fall apart. But now it's starting to, you know, press a little bit more southeast again. So there's nothing down here. So who knows when this storm will start to weaken. Could be a while. Yeah, I think this thing's getting ready to produce another tornado again. That's why they've gone ahead and put another cautionary tornado warning out. You got the inflow notch here. It, it's getting ready. I mean, it could be producing another brief tornado, probably the third or fourth one this evening. You can see the couplets trying to, you know, strengthen yet again here. Mainly over the open areas right now, but you can see it's there. It is there. It's broad, but it's there. I'm doing pretty good this evening. How are you, Haley? Let's see if there's any... Um, let's see what the correlation coefficient has looked like recently. Yeah, it's not showing anything. It's just because it's an open area. Not much to show on a correlation coefficient if it's picking up dirt, right? Yeah, so I'll watch this. If you watch it into the Pete's region, so if you live in Pete's, Colorado, um, just continue to watch this. The Crook region, the Illif region, those areas, um, and then down there toward like Fleming, Daly, Sedgwick, the Interstate 76 area. Watch out for that. Could be producing brief tornadoes over the next, you know, hour or two there's nothing really stopping this storm to the southeast the only thing that has a chance to stop it is that storm just west of julesburg um with this here but if it continues to press further south and just south of that and you know that thing could be going for a while do you think the climate prediction center's july temperature outlook for north carolina is accurate yes i do Absolutely correct. Yes, I do. Because July is literally like three days from now. So, yes, I think it's correct. Thank you for asking, though, for my opinion. But, yes, it, I believe it is correct. If you want any updates on that, I had a video out this morning or this afternoon depicting what I thought for the long range forecast for that. And I'll be doing a video tomorrow. I always, you know, try to sprinkle in some long-range weather forecast toward the end. You know, to, that's accurate enough to put out. I don't go too far out um, when I'm doing long-range for the most part. We need nine more subscribers, then we'll be at 31,500. Um, we also need 10 more likes. We'll be at 150 likes for the evening. So I appreciate if everybody would press the like button. We need 10 more to get to 150 before I leave this evening. That'd be awesome. So I thank you guys for joining. All right. Yeah, this, so let's see... Yeah, that could be producing a tornado. Like I said, if you live in the Pete's region, the Pete's Colorado region over here, watch out for that. This could start to move in your direction rather soon. And if it does, it could you know, bring another threat for a brief spin-up tornado. There's not much on the correlation coefficient to go off of right now. And that just could be because it's not on the ground. Yeah, that storm, that storm over here in Pine Bluff just completely, completely fell apart for the most part. It's just pretty much producing some, you know, some hail, some damaging winds, but not as large as it was. And then there's another storm north and west of Burns trying to develop. That one could go severe. We could have three in a row. So who knows? We got lots of severe storms in this area tonight. No, I don't think it goes as far south as Kansas. Kansas is in the influence of that upper-level high pressure, that ridge. 
it w the storms would completely weak. I mean, there's a severe thunderstorm warning in Kansas right now, but once we get deeper into the evening, I would not expect that to be severe too much longer, to be honest with you. Probably will be falling apart before your very eyes. Very soon. Hopefully the power doesn't go because I'm right next to the watch. You know, it. you should be good. I think the storms up in Wisconsin tonight will probably be more, uh, you know, they'll grow in intensity and coverage overnight tonight, like after midnight, but I don't think it's, it's not going to turn into a derecho or anything like that. It'll be just like a line of storms dropping south or southeast through the night. And the thing you'll have to worry about is just heavy rain, but that area still needs rain anyway, so I'm not too worried about a flooding threat. Um, if you lost power, it would mainly be because of the lightning, not because of damaging winds. But there still could be, you know, 60, 70 mile hour winds, still a possibility, but probably more the cloudier on lightning than anything else. More severe weather next week, possible. Is Chicago going to get any rain? Yes, uh, maybe. <laughs> I don't. I, I, honestly, the threat is there for rain almost every day in Chicago, but it's not going to rain every day in Chicago. Um, but there, there should be some rain maybe tomorrow um, into the weekend at times. This corridor in here should get some rain at some point, but it, it you know, when that happens remains to be seen. And you're in a drought in Chicago, so it is hard to get rain, even though it shows like 50% chance of rain every day. I will tell you right now, there's going to be many dry hours, and it will not, you know, and it may not even rain some of those days at all, if any of those. So it's basically a 50-50 chance every single day, in my opinion. When do I do? I do my I do my monthly forecast on the first of every month for the most part. So like July first on Saturday, that's when that forecast will come out. I'll go over the weekly forecast for July and what like the trends are and whatnot. Yeah, I'm in a marginal in Northern Illinois. It, we ain't getting, we're not going to get anything tonight. Nope, that cap is too strong. We need that line up into Wisconsin to form and then break that cap a little bit more. Then we'll get some rain maybe later. But Oh, what's happening here? So they... Wow, that's some big hail up here, guys. We still got that two-inch hail potential just south of Kimball and Potter. Yeah, we got a new severe thunderstorm warning down here as well that's Probably actually not really that new. Let's see. Down into the northwest. What is what is this? Let's see. What is this? 70 mile hour wind from what? What is this? Here, just, just a second, guys. I don't even know what's happening. There's like no thunderstorms. Okay, so there's like a really... Uh, there's like a thunderstorm that's... Trying to develop, but producing 70 mile hour winds, I guess, into, into northwest Texas. Huh. That's until 9.15 uh, p.m. Central Daylight Time, moving northeast at 35 miles an hour. Dalhart, Stratford, Boise City, Hartley, Cactus, Texline, Ware, Felt, and Conlin. Those areas watch out for some 70 mile per hour winds. Wow. Proves you don't even need a thunderstorm then. Probably some outflow would be a good guess for here, too. That's why they're seeing the 70-mile-an-hour winds. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you, Saunders, for the $5 donation. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Did not have to do that. Thank you. Everybody give a round of applause in the chat for Saunders for the $5. I appreciate it. You might, honestly, rain maze, but, you know, it, you're probably too far north for one this year. A lot of the precipitation has been further south. Yeah, 
And we got a little bit of a storm cell here north of Spearfish. And look at that, guys. Mainly outside of the severe thunderstorm watch, and we're seeing a warning. So that can even happen as well. You don't even have to be in a watch to get a, a severe warning tonight. Yeah, but the main show tonight down here so far is east of Cheyenne with that big supercell. Big hailers east of Pine Bluffs. Yeah, I think that ridge, James, that ridge of high pressure is probably, it, July might start more average, but I think that ridge of high pressure really starts to build um, into the second half of the month. But you might be on that kind of the northeastern, eastern periphery of the ridge, so it's really difficult to tell um, into North Carolina because you're kind of going to be in that storm track zone where you see clusters of showers and storms that could be severe. Um, and bring some flooding rains, but you also could be in the heat bubble as well. So it's kind of hard to decipher, you know, 50 to 100 miles, whether you're going to be in the 90 degree heat or you're going to see 70s and rain for most of the day. It's really tough. You're kind of on that line, so it's hard to determine. But I say in general, um, you know, it may start average in July and then trend warmer through the second half of the month. But if you're in that storm track zone, you, you might be a little cooler. So it could be a bust forecast for temperatures there in North Carolina, depending on where that resides. Yeah, well, that's because the El Nino is starting to develop their rain maps. That's going to happen. It's going to be drier to the north and wetter to the south. Just wait till the fall. Then we'll be talking about nothing in the Midwest. <laughs> it's going to be drier than normal, guys. Yeah, they're going to be talking about snowstorms on the East Coast and nothing in the Midwest, right? That's what we had last winter, nothing. Yeah, I don't know, guys. These patterns are so variable, things can change on a dime, really. I mean, these blocking patterns and stuff, and that's why you have us here to tell you what you can expect. Well, all right, guys, um, you know, I got to go do some things here this evening. Uh, get ready to do my video. More information on that for tomorrow's video. Got to gather that information, do some research on that, um, and get ready for a new day tomorrow. But, yeah, if you guys are into northeastern Colorado, watch out for this tornado warning. Definitely some dangerous weather overnight, maybe even some hail that could be up to two or three inches in diameter overnight tonight. Possibility, at least over the next couple of hours. Um, we'll have to wait and see what, what will happen there. But other than that, just some isolated severe weather up there into like the Dakotas region. Wisconsin, there could be another line of storms developing that'll drop south over the next couple of hours there. And then just some isolated storms. Underneath the influence of that ridge, just for the next couple of hours, probably into Kansas, Oklahoma Panhandle, and the Texas Panhandle. Um, other than that, things should be about A-OK -okay everywhere else. And watch out for severe weather tomorrow. I'll have another update on my video forecast for tomorrow. Watch out between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. tomorrow. 10 a.m. in the morning central time or 2 p.m. Uh, in the afternoon central time. That's when my video forecast will be out, all right? So be looking out for that. I'll have another video forecast. If you guys have not watched today's weather forecast video, go to my YouTube channel. Be sure to watch that. Watch the El Nino, the Super El Nino video. Lots of great information on what to expect over the next couple of months there, generalized as well. Um, and other than that, I will be looking forward to going live a little bit more frequently, hopefully over the next couple of weeks, um, just to talk about the weather pattern, if not, uh, we'll be going over some severe weather stuff as well, like we did tonight. So, I have no idea, Haley. It's possible, yes, um, but it's also, you know, it could not happen either. So, we'll see. We'll see. But thank you guys so much um, for being here this evening. It means a lot. Appreciate the support, all the new subscribers, all the donations. Thank you guys so much. Um, for just being here. appreciate all the likes, all the people commenting in the chat tonight. Much appreciated. Lots of great questions as always. 
Well, it's great to be back doing a live stream, and hopefully I'll be able to come back and answer any more questions. If you guys do have questions, though, uh, don't you know? Don't hesitate. Feel free to ask any questions during my videos, um, during you know the days that I do them, which is mostly every day. So um, be sure to do that, and I'll answer it to the best of my ability. All right, so. Have a great rest of your Wednesday evening, everybody. Hopefully the smoke can clear out for the Midwest, Ohio Valley, Great Lakes region over the next couple of days so you guys can get out and enjoy the nice weather before the dog days of summer come and you start to see a lot of heat and humidity building in July and August, all right? So go enjoy that outside, and I hope that you guys have a great rest of your week, a great rest of your Wednesday, and I'll see you all tomorrow in the next video. Good night, everybody.